So what's going on guys, DIY Dan, Saltwater Junkie here again, and in this video I'm going to be changing out my Metal Halide T5 light fixture that I've been running for about six or seven years with some of the cheaper LED lights that are bought on Amazon. I got three different kinds. One was a Flyzon, one was a Wills, and the other was an Arknoa. Hope I'm saying those right. And I'm going to go over the good and bad that I found in each one. I normally wouldn't buy three different kinds, but I wanted to kind of compare these lights and figure out which one I liked more or whether there was a big difference between them. I'm also going to go over some of the key advantages that I saw between running my old metal halide and T5 fixture versus running these LEDs. And some of the things that I wish these LEDs would have had that don't. And I'm also going to be doing an update on my 125 Reef, let you guys know why I think my corals aren't doing too good and how we're going to improve upon that. So here is a timetable as far as what I talk about in this video. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, you can skip to what you want to see. So I don't waste your guys' time. Let me know in the comments if you like the way I did this and I can start doing it on future videos. So let's get to it. So right here, the tank is running on the T5 lights. Now there's a total of eight of them and 50% of them are blue and 50% of them are white light. And then this is a view of the metal halides with the T5s running at the same time. One of the biggest disadvantages of the metal halide is the energy cost and the amount of heat that they put off while they're running. So right here, I'm using my heat gun to see how hot these lights were getting. Now I only had these on for about 10 minutes and they were already reading between 140 and 150 degrees. So now I'm gonna show you how the LEDs measured as far as the heat and these have already been on for about an hour. The Arc Noir was reading at 87 degrees, the Wills was reading about 82 to 83 and the Flies On was also reading at 82 degrees and I was able to give you a good shot of that one actually reading because you could not see the other two. I'm gonna give you a quick listen to the LED lights as well, and it's kind of hard to tell in this video between the two. However, I would say that the LEDs were about half as loud as what the metal halides were. So since the metal halides ran so hot and they consumed a lot more energy, I usually ran them in the middle of the night so I was off peak energy cost, and so it wouldn't add a lot of extra heat to the house while we were up moving around. So that's one key advantage to the LEDs. They run a lot cooler and use a lot less energy, so I feel better about running those during the day when we're up and can appreciate the aquarium. Another thing that used to be really annoying with this light is the maintenance aspect of it. I had a couple of the ballast for the T5 bulbs go bad, Plus trying to figure out whether it was just a bulb or it was the ballast could be kind of annoying. And the fact of replacing the ballast, you had to disassemble this light, which was a complete pain. Overall, the metal halide were pretty reliable, but I had to do one or two bulbs on that as well. So that's the main reasons why I went from the halide T5 setup to the LEDs. And that's just me and my personal experiences. Now we'll go into how I mounted these lights what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them, and the differences between the three brands as well. Now one thing I didn't like about all three of these lights is the mounting options for it. They came with some cables and hooks to hook to the light with a single hook in the center. And it did take me a little bit to figure out how I was gonna mount these lights inside my canopy. So what I ended up doing is just looping the cable around the back part of my canopy and hooking it to the one side of the light I did not have that option as far as the front goes because of the cabinet doors, so I had to drill a hole. I used a pilot bit first, then drilled a little bit from the bottom side up, then finished the drill from the top so I did not have it splinter out and make my canopy look like crap. The end result ended up coming out okay, but there wasn't very many options as far as how to mount these lights. One other thing that I didn't like about all three of these lights is you could not mimic sunrise to sunset you can dim and adjust the intensity of the light, but it is not controllable throughout the day. So basically you have to set your light intensity and then use an external timer to turn it on and off. As far as the overall look to the lights themselves, which wasn't that big of a deal to me because they were in the canopy. However, if you were just hanging these lights above your tank, obviously you would want them to have a clean look. 
The flies on and the wheels to me had a nice clean look. The control knobs were the only thing on the front of the light and they were kind of small. The power button and the power cord came off the side. The Arc Noah, on the other hand, had everything coming off the top of the light. They were kind of big and bulky, plus it ran two power cords, which if these are low energy, why do you need to run it with two power cords? Right here, I'm just lifting this light up and down at different heights just to see the difference in the lighting in the aquarium. It didn't seem to make too big of a difference, and I ended up mounting these pretty high to keep everything up and out of the way, and all three lights were about the same as far as this goes. So I've got all three lights mounted above the aquarium and I'm gonna go through them one at a time so you can see the difference in the lighting intensity for each light. This is the flies on light. This is the wills light. And I'm running the blue all the way up and down and then the white all the way up and down so you can see the full spectrum of each light. As far as my opinion goes, the wills and the flies on were very similar to each other. The Arc Noah just did not have the same color intensity and I was just not as happy with what I could get out of that light. What I'm gonna end up doing is putting the Arc Noah in the center and putting the wheels and the flies on on the outsides of this tank. So here's a view when I had the Arc Noah light on the right side of the tank. And you can see it's just got more of a purple tinge and I could never even it out so it looked the same as the wheels or the flies on light. So here's a video of once I repositioned the lights so you can see it blends in a little better because that one Arc Noah light just does not have the same color intensity as the other two. I ended up leaving the blue adjustment all the way up on all three lights. The white, red, and green light I ended up setting at 40 to 60 percent depending on which light it was. So I do not have the test equipment to test the actual PAR and what the light is actually producing in the tank, but uh, I do have some good color out of my corals, which I'm going to show you. Uh, I did watch a couple videos testing these lights as well. As far as the PAR goes, the wheels tested not quite as good as the flies on, but it was pretty close. And then they used another name, but the other light looked very, very similar to this Arc Noah, and it did not test as good. So here is a view of my leather coral with the metal halides on it, and here is a view with the LEDs. So one other thing to keep in mind is if you want to daisy chain the lights together, the wheels does have the ability to do that on top of it. And I did end up using that function. The Arc Noah did not have any kind of a daisy chain on it whatsoever. The Flies On did have a daisy chain ability as well. And it does look a little weird, but it does fit a 110 outlet. I did not end up using the daisy chain on the Flies On light because I had a total of four cords between the three lights and I was able to use three of them on my timer that I'm using, so I only had to daisy chain the one. If you don't end up using the daisy chain on the top of these lights, I do recommend that you put a safety cover on them to prevent any water from possibly splashing up into the live 110 outlet. So for those of you guys who have not been following my channel, this is my filtration room for that 125 gallon reef. So in the last update that I did, guys, I actually showed you guys a couple things that I had made changes to. One was the auto top-off container. I made that from a 12-gallon trash can to a 20-gallon aquarium I had left over. And that's working out really well. I'm really glad that I did that. Uh, it just makes it a lot less maintenance that I have to do weekly. The bigger strainer that I did on my refugium has worked out well. Ever since I made that thing, I haven't had to clean it off, and I was having to clean that other strainer off like once every other week or so. So that's worked out well. I did take the grow lights that I had for the algae scrubber off of this aquarium and use them on my other huge algae scrubber build and just put one of these four foot LED strips on here and I really haven't noticed that big of a difference in the growth of the algae on my algae scrubbers. So that is kind of an interesting thing as well. So my nitrates on this system are reading untraceable levels and I give that credit to that algae scrubber because I had fought the nitrates for years before doing that algae scrubber and now I have not had a problem. My ammonias have never been a problem and the reason I believe that my corals are struggling is because I don't really do water changes that often because my nitrates stay so low. So the alkalinity, calcium and magnesium is probably getting depleted over time and because I either forget or I'm not consistent about dosing those items into my aquarium. I decided to go buy a J-Bow dosing pump. 
One of the things that's been holding me back from getting one is the cost. However, this pump was only $60, so I figured it was worth a try. And I've had pretty good luck with some of my Jabo products that I bought previously, even though they are a little bit on the cheaper side. One other thing that's happening in this tank that I'm not too fond of is the algae growth I'm getting. I was running my lights about 10 hours a day. When I put these LEDs on, I'm gonna cut that back to seven hours a day. Hopefully that'll start cutting back on that algae growth. Plus I need to add a couple more algae eating fish to this as well. So the last thing that I had updated in my last video was that I put these pieces of plastic over my overflows in the main display. And the reason I did that is to keep the light from entering the overflow because I was having algae build up and it would start restricting the water flow going to my sump. Since I have done that, I have not had that issue. So that's about it for this update, guys. Besides those couple of items we changed, everything else is running quite well and I haven't had any issues. Keep in mind that I only do these saltwater videos if something drastically happens or I make a major change because I just don't want to waste your guys' time giving you videos when there's not much going on. I will have a video on that dosing pump coming out pretty quickly and then I always do update videos if need be on any of the stuff I've talked about in previous videos. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some good information. If so, hit like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.